Hey everyone, I'm Amanda, the Red Witch Bitch, and today I want to talk about one of my pet peeves. Every witch has them about something that they specialize in. I don't necessarily specialize in this, however, it is still one of my huge pet peeves, and this is chakras and energy centers. Uh, yeah. For decades, people have thought that they are the same thing because what we understand in the Western world is not the same as it is in Eastern cultures. So let's talk about what chakras actually are and what energy centers really are. Let's go. Here in the Western world, we have a very skewed viewpoint about what chakras actually are. And by the way, that's the way you really say it. You don't say it chakra or chakra, it's chakra. Yeah, it's, it's throaty, chakra. Chakras in Eastern cultures are very different than what we have in the Western world. The understanding of Western chakras is like you have seven chakras up and down your body. This is the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, the sacral, and then the root chakra but they're not actually chakras, those are energy centers. But we'll get to that in a second. In the practice of chakras, there are 114 different chakras and 72,000 nadis, which are energy pathways that the energy flows through with the chakra system. So you'll have seven major chakras, 21 minor chakras, and 86 micro chakras. And they don't stay stationary. They are in all parts of your body, like your fingers, your hands, your neck, your chest, your shoulders, everything. Within the practice of chakras, unless you are studying under a guru or you are part of Hinduism, then chakras aren't for you. You're not practicing chakras, you're practicing energy centers. The first real Western exposure to chakras that the Western world had was from Sir John Woodruff in 1919 and Charles W. Leadbeater in 1927. They didn't actually understand chakras at all. They just didn't. They were old white men who didn't actually know what they were talking about and they bastardized chakras to what they are today in the Western world. And now if you go to Google, you can find any random person, usually one named like fucking Rainbow Moonstone, that'll teach you about how to open your chakras and shit like that. That's, that's not, that's not at all. No. Another interesting thing about chakras is that they have no color. They're only assigned color so that you can focus on them during meditation, but they don't have a color. And the color system that we have associated with chakras is not the same as what the Hindu beliefs of chakras really was. Like some of the colors, yeah, sure. But a lot of it has been bastardized, even the color system. Chakras were first mentioned in the Vedas in 1500 BCE or around there. The Vedas outline what the chakras do, where they're located, how to work with them and all of that good stuff. And the word chakra means wheel. So they're like turning wheels of energy within your body. For a long time, I thought I was practicing the chakra system too. I really did because I didn't know any better. Then, you know, I learned better and I changed my points of view. This is where I get kind of nitpicky about it now because I figured it out and I'm one, I, I just want everybody else to as well. This is where I changed saying chakra to energy center. So I don't practice chakras, I practice energy centers, which is what everyone has. Not everybody can practice the chakra system, but everybody has and can practice energy centers. But these are based on the Hellenic energy centers, the points in your body where energy is more condensed in a way, and it's vital points of energy. So we still have the crown, the third eye, the throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral, and root. But there's no higher crown, etheric, earth star, no, there's none of that. It's just the seven. So any source that you find is saying, oh, here's how to unlock your earth star chakra. They're whitewashing it and they're full of shit. If you've studied energy centers or chakras and you have the basic idea of what they do, then congratulations, it's pretty much the same in energy centers as it is in chakras. They do kind of vary at certain points, but it's still kind of the same. However, if you don't already know what they do, then allow me to run through it with you real quick. First, we have the crown energy center. This talks about divine consciousness, spiritual connection, wisdom, open-mindedness, and claircognizance, which is, you know, knowing, like clear knowing. The brow or the third eye is about intuition, focus, imagination, thought, insight, perception, wisdom, and psychic abilities. The throat is all about communication. This is creative expression, speaking, listening, attunement, truth, alignment, and purification. The heart energy center concerns love, compassion, 
gratefulness, balance, forgiveness, and connection. The gastric center, or the solar plexus, talks about responsibility, confidence, willpower, self-esteem, ego, vitality, mastery, and manifestation. The sacral energy center is about movement, initiation, connection, pleasure, desire, creativity, and change. And then the root energy center, which is at the bottom of your tailbone, is grounding, safety, security, and survival instincts. It's your fight or flight. Another thing about energy centers that people kind of mix up is that you don't have to activate them or like anything. Um, it doesn't work like that. You don't have to open them. You don't have to activate them. You just, they just are. They are there for you to use. You don't have to open up something that's already opened. You can work with them, purify them, exercise them, clear them of negative energy or stagnation. This is done through meditation and visualizing those different lotuses of the colors of those different energy centers, just kind of like in the chakra system, you can help clarify them and strengthen them. This also applies for the third eye or the brow energy center. You don't have to open your third eye. Your third eye is already there. Your energy center is already activated. It's activated as you are born. Like there's nothing to open. There's nothing to open with your third eye or any of your energy centers. Does it need exercising? Yeah, absolutely, just like any muscle. But it does not need to be opened. Now, Reiki practitioners will help you clean out the energy of your different energy centers. They will help cleanse your aura. They will help do all these things. It does sound kind of like a load of shit, but I promise you it's not. Like, it feels really amazing. It gives you these feelings that you can't quite you know, rationalize. One of the people in my Discord server, Archive of the Cobalt Soul, we do monthly Reiki sessions with some of the people in our group or just the mods if, if nobody else wants them. So we kind of just do that monthly. And a lot of people who are in there, they say that they feel just incredible. They feel different. And I was a skeptic before she did the, uh, the you know, energy center cleansing and shit. But after she did that, I was a total believer. Like. It's amazing. If you want any more information about chakras in their cultural context, then we do have that in the server as well as energy centers and how to work with them, what they are, and how to not culturally appropriate chakras. All that can be found in the Discord server and more. We can be found on Discord or you can follow the link down below. We're a huge witchy occult Discord server filled to the brim with information. We are a huge Discord database of occult and arcane information. So even if you don't wanna learn about chakras or energy centers, we probably definitely have something for you in there. So give us a look anyway, I'll meet you there. All right, so until next time, I will see you later. Have fun and happy witching.